All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie, this is totally me when I'm shuffling a deck of cards in a game of Uno or Poker. Now it's time to stop once and for all. God damn it. Fitting for this clickbait title, we have collected, gathered five classic ways to shuffle a pack of cards. In all honesty, I don't really know much more than that, but uh, five seems to be a really uh, fitting number for this video. So for these shuffles, all you will need is a deck of cards and no other surface. You wouldn't have to shuffle a deck of cards over the table, over your leg, or just look like a pathetic pleb anymore. Once you learn these techniques, you will be a star at your parties, all the girls will be yours. And uh, yeah, so these are the five ways that we are going to teach you how to shuffle a pack of cards. The first one is the overhand shuffle, which is the way your grandmother shuffles pack of cards. The other one would be a Hindu shuffle, which is basically the same action, but you're doing it in a really weird grip. Um, this is also a basic way to shuffle a pack of playing cards. Then this is the in the hands rifle shuffle, and this looks a little bit more professional. So. I used to call it rifle shuffle. Rifle shuffle. I was dumb dumb, so it is rifle shuffle and then it's a bridge action afterwards. Another way, a little bit more precise, is a ferro shuffle, when you interweave all the cards perfectly and then perform a bridge. And uh, finally, there is a variation when you're performing almost exactly the same actions as in ferro shuffle, but you're doing it with one hand. So you split the deck into two halves, interweave them like this and shuffle them with one hand. So this is a really advanced way to shuffle a pack of cards and we're going to cover all these shuffles in a moment. So let's get into the explanations. So first and foremost I would like to say that I am right-handed, so that means that I will be starting all the shuffles and starting with the deck placed in my left hand. This is how it works usually. And uh, if you're left-handed, then you obviously have to mirror all the actions. So with the overhand shuffle, you start with the deck in the dealer's grip in your left hand. And then you come over with the right hand and pick up the deck like that with your middle finger and thumb on the short edges, tilt up the deck a little bit and you're ready to perform the overhand shuffle by sliding or peeling off this top card or a pack of several cards. Usually it's done when you're peeling off two or three cards. And you perform this as a continuous action like this. You peel off the cards and all the time uh, all the fingers in your left hand and this is the index, the middle and the ring and the pinky are protecting the cards from falling down. You can also come over with your index finger over here so that the cards won't fall on this side. And this is when you have the secured grip and you can continue all this stripping action. You strip off the cards like this until you run out of cards. Interesting fact that this shuffle isn't really effective. A lot of mathematicians have figured out that you have to shuffle a deck of playing cards at least 10,000 times in order for all the cards to be randomly distributed across the deck compared to its initial state. So now onto the Hindu shuffle. This is basically another way to shuffle a deck of cards which looks very similar to overhand shuffle. Um, there's nothing special in here. You start with the deck in dealer's grip in your left hand and you come over with your right hand and uh, this time you grip the deck on the long edges with your middle finger and your thumb like that 
and you're holding specifically the lower uh, part of the deck so that you can easily strip out this top package of like 5 to 10 cards with your thumb and your middle finger like this and you slide it over and this top package is now remaining in your, in your left hand. You can continue the action of stripping the packets like this and uh, this is how the Hindu shuffle works. So once you finished, you square the deck and you end up in the dealer's grip. This is another way to shuffle a deck of cards if you're a basic bitch, if you don't know how to properly shuffle a deck of cards. I'm pretty sure the odds of you shuffling the deck of cards and randomizing the order of the cards is abysmal. It's about the same as compared to the overhand shuffle. So this is pretty much useless shuffle as well, but if you want, you can still use this one. This is the Hindu shuffle. Now the riffle shuffle, this is probably the most effective and uh, a little bit more fancier way to shuffle a deck of playing cards. It looks like this. You also start from a dealer's grip and then you come over with your right hand and grip the deck in this kind of variation of end grip when your thumb is covering this short edge and your middle finger, ring finger and pinky is covering the opposite short edge and your knuckle of your index finger is uh, placed somewhere in the center of the cards. So when you come over, uh, you basically let go with your left hand and now riffle with your thumb about half of the cards. You can probably come over with your left hand and hold the cards from falling down. So what happens here is you hold the deck in this kind of and grip, you push with your knuckle of your index finger and then on this edge you're riffling through the cards with your thumb like this. When you reach half of the deck like this, you just re-grip this lower package into your left hand with the help of your index finger, of your ring finger, of your middle finger, like that and you just mirror the action. The deck is split into two packets and they are placed in the same position in your both hands. So just learn this action of splitting the cards and regripping them. This is really easy, but if you will have troubles with that, maybe you would want to use some surface like your leg um, at the beginning, but eventually you wouldn't want to use anything except your hands. This is why it is called in the hands rifle shuffle. So you split the deck, now we have two piles about the same size in your hands and uh, now you have to shuffle the cards. So this is done about like the same action as you were splitting the cards in the first place. Um, now you have to split the cards simultaneously on each packet. So you push down with your knuckles of your index finger. Some people love to push with their index fingers being straight like that. Um, I don't know, you can extend your fingers if you want to, you can just push with your knuckles. And then you want the cards to be 
interweaving uh, during the action of rifling, like this. So, one tip to do this is you want to rifle the cards um, at an angle, because when you start doing this, sometimes the cards won't be interwoven and you won't be able to perform a bridge shuffle, which is uh, the second part of the shuffle, which is also important. So I recommend split the deck into two piles, identical piles, and start riffling cards at a slight angle. This way they will eventually be interwoven. It shouldn't be perfect. You can of course master the shuffle when each card uh, is interwoven perfectly, like in a fairy shuffle, but it isn't necessary. And then we perform the bridge shuffle. Uh, so once you have finished this action, you end up in this position, the cards are pretty much stable right now, you don't need any kind of support underneath. Uh, you can pretty much press with your thumb, uh, like this, and uh, when you're pressing with the thumb, you want to kind of bend the cards with uh, your both hands on these sides, forming this kind of letter C. And uh, when you feel that the cards are pressed enough, you can release the pressure and the cards will shuffle themselves in a bridge like this. So this looks kind of challenging if you have never done this before, but believe me, after like one month of practice, you will be able to perform the shuffle without any problems and your hand size, your like, abilities, your natural skill has nothing to do, it's just practice, it comes with practice, so you have to just do all these actions over and over again and eventually you'll get it done. You have to perform like 10,000 overhand shuffles in order to shuffle a deck of cards. With rifle shuffle and most likely with ferro shuffle you have to perform about 7 in order to get the deck into the randomized order and uh, with ferro shuffles it's about the same but you don't want to perform 8 perfect ferro shuffles in a row. Why so? I will explain in a different video, it's a completely different topic. But still, fire shuffle is a really effective way to shuffle the playing cards. And in order to randomize the order of the cards, you probably would want to combine a little bit of overhand shuffles, maybe some rifle shuffles and some ferro shuffles. So with ferro shuffle, you have to obviously start, as always, in your left hand in dealer's grip. And then you have to tilt up the deck like this. This is like a high dealer's grip. And uh, split the deck into two equal halves with your right hand. So you come over with your right hand and then it comes with practice as well. But right now I can see that I have split the deck into two equal halves. The uh, more equal the halves, the more chances that you will perform a proper ferro shuffle. So once you have split the cards, you just take this uh, lower part with your left hand and uh, hold this uh, pack with your right hand and then you have to perform the squaring action. This is really important because usually when you split the cards uh, they are somehow uneven on these edges and this is really crucial for the shuffle to be performed. You need to be sure that all these edges are even. This is how you do. Uh, straighten these edges, you just tap them on each other like this, tap them from behind 
usually two or three times is enough. I'm just exaggerating the motion. So now what you do, there are a couple of ways to perform a ferro shuffle. It depends if your deck is traditionally cut. I don't believe in all this bullshit. I think that you can perform ferro shuffle the way you want to perform with any deck. So you just use your index finger here so that it touches this short edge of the cards. And then you use this index finger as a guide. Right now you can see that I am actually helping these cards to be aligned, perfectly aligned. And at this point I'm relaxing the grip in my left hand, especially my thumb. And I'm relaxing the grip in my right hand and especially with my thumb here as well. So what I do is just tap here, use my index finger as a guide, make sure the cards are aligned, relax the grip a little bit so that the cards can be interwoven. And what I do is this action. I just start sliding the cards like this and eventually they start interweaving perfectly like this. And it's still not perfect. You can see there is a small mistake. So because this is quite an old cheap deck of playing cards, uh, there's a mistake. Two cards haven't been interweaven so they create a small gap here. It isn't really that important, you can just leave it as is. So once you're in this position, you have just pushed the card through at like an inch or so. Now you can come over with your right hand like this, push on this short edge and on this short opposite short edge with the, the other fingers like this and perform a bridge shuffle. So once you have created this C letter shape uh, with your deck, you just let go with your index finger, let the cards to be released and shuffled. And you can see you can perform this bridge action at any side you want. Sometimes it feels like I want to perform it in my right hand, sometimes in my left hand. It depends, whatever works best for you. The principle is about the same. Once again, it takes a lot of practice. If you are unfamiliar with the shuffle, you want to practice splitting the deck properly. Interviewing action is probably the most, the knackiest part in here. Practice with an old or like used deck or the deck that you don't really care about because you will have a lot of this thing happening. So the edges of the cards will have some problems. The cards will start splitting because you're trying to ferro them incorrectly. So you don't have to force them to be pushed. So literally, they are interviewing themselves if you do this properly. So if you like this video, smash like on this video. If you have small hands, smash dislike. When we will reach 1000 likes or dislikes on this video, a link for one-handed shuffle will appear here. So please smash like, subscribe, ring the bell and do pobacchina.